Welcome to the R video tutorial on plotting in R part 2. So in order to do this tutorial, you should have gone through plotting in R part 1, or the first graphics in R video. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is load up some data. So I've got some data that I want to load up. Now to do this, I'm going to read in some data, and you should know how to do this already from watching a previous video tutorial, so I'm not going to go over that. Okay, I've read in my data. Now what I want to do is create a histogram. And in this histogram, I've put in several other options that were not in the previous video. So if you look at this, I'm going to use the hist function again. I'm going to specify my data. Now here I'm going to have freak equals false. That's saying I want it as a percentage, not as a count. So I'm going to tell it I want it as a percentage, not a count, because I want to put a density plot over this. Uh, I'm changing the X label to EQS, which is the name of my variable, which is an environmental quality score. I'm going to change the color of my histogram to blue, and I'm going to put the main for my main header as histogram with normal density. Now, in order to put the density on top of it, I'm going to need a few different quantities from my data set. I'm going to need the minimum. I'm going to need the maximum. I'm going to need the mean and the standard deviation. Now, what I'm going to use these for is I'm going to create a sequence that goes from the minimum of my data set to the maximum of my data set. And I'm going to space it off by 0 0.01. Then using that, I'm going to use this line statement. Lines will add a line to my histogram. And it needs to know what the x values are and the y values. Well, the x values are my sequence. These are the the range of the data, the minimum and the maximum, and all the values in between. That's what my sequence did. Then I'm going to use the dnorm function, which is the density for the normal. I'm going to plug in x1 as well. But for this, I'm going to need the mean and the standard deviation. And I'm going to color this red. So when I highlight this and run it, and bingo, I get a histogram with a normal density applied over it. And as you can see, the normal density does not fit well to this. So often people say, oh, my data is normally distributed. This is evidence that this data is not normally distributed. Now, in another video tutorial, I'll show you how to assess normality. Here I'm just trying to show you how to do some interesting things with some plots. All right, so the next thing we might want to do is layer some plots. That way we can look at different distributions. So what I have in my code here in the next section is I want to plot some probability distributions. And for my example, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to look at the standard normal distribution. And I also want to look and see how that differs from the T distribution. So what I've done here is, again, I've created a sequence. This one's going to go from negative 4 to 4 by 0.1. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the normal distribution. And I'm going to use D norm again because it's the density for the normal distribution across the values of x1. The mean is 0. The standard deviation is 1. I'm going to add the option type equals L. That's going to give me a line. It's going to connect the dots. LTY is the line type. In this specific one, I'm specifying it as 1. And you'll see why later. My x label is going to be x. My y label is going to be density. Now, this will give me just the picture of the normal distribution but I want the T distribution as well. So I'm going to use the line statement again. And here, I'm going to go across to X1 again. I'm going to use DT, which is the density for the T distribution, across to X1 with one degree of freedom. And then the line type is 2. The reason I have 2 is because it will be different than 1, so I'll be able to tell them apart when I get this picture. The next one is another line statement. Here are the degrees of freedom on the T distribution is 5 degrees of freedom, and I'm using a line type of 3. I also want to see what 10 looks like. So if I run this, all right, so this is the picture I get. And the problem is, is they all look quite similar to each other. Now this is a problem. I can't tell them apart. So what I would like to do is add a legend. But one thing you can notice here is that each one of these densities that it's plotted is in a different line type. 
the, all the lines look different. So when I put a legend on here, I'll be able to tell them apart. I could similarly have done colors, but here I was trying to demonstrate the idea of using a line type. So down here at the bottom, I have a legend statement. This will add a legend, and you're going to do legend. The first argument is where the legend is going to be. It's going to be the top left corner of the legend. Here I'm going to put it at 2, and the Y coordinate is going to be 0 0.4. Now, I have to tell it what is what in terms of what it wants in the legend. Now, so I've created a vector here using C. N01 is going to be for my standard normal. T, DF equals 1 for 1 degree of freedom, T distribution, DF equals 5, and so on. Now, down at the end, what I want to do is I want to tell it which line types correspond to it. And that's why I specified them above. So here you can see I have a vector, which is defined by C, 1, 2, 3, 4, and those correspond to my names in the names vector, which is the ones that have the T, DF1, and so on in it. Now, these correspond directly. So, 1 corresponds to standard normal, 2 corresponds to T with the degrees of freedom of 1, and so on. So, when I put this together and run it, all right, now I get the plot that I had before, but now you can see that there is a legend on it. And notice that the legend is located at X equals 2 and Y equals 0.4. And in there, I have each of my demonstrated line types. And next to it is the identifier that I put with it. So normal 0, 1, T, D, F equals 1, T, D, F equals 5, T, D, F equals 10. Now, this gives you the ability to look and see how similar or different T distributions are from the normal distribution. But that's not the point of this lesson. What we're trying to do here is show you how to create different plots in R all right, so this has been the R video tutorial on plotting in R part two. If you have any questions, please ask or watch the next video.